This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed your break. Maybe you made yourself a nice cup of tea or a nice other refreshing drink that you had. Maybe a cup of coffee uh, was required to, to keep you going and powering through this complex chapter. Because what we've done so far is we've looked at the example for fair value through profit or loss. Fair value through other comprehensive income. So you can possibly guess what is cropping up next, can't you? Amortised cost. So is this third transaction going to be amortised cost as a financial asset? Well, what we've got here is that we have bought 10,000 debentures. So we have an investment in debt. And that investment in debt will be measured at amortised cost if there are contractual cash flows. So looking at the contractual cash flow test and if the business model is to hold that debt investment until maturity. So it says within there that there is a 4% coupon rate. So that's a promise for the amount of money that we will receive annually. So 4% on the par value. It also says that it will be redeemable in four years time. So, again, we're assuming that with nothing else told, that we are intending to hold it for the four years and receive it back at that 5% premium. So, what we have here is a financial asset investment in debt that is measured at amortized cost. Okay. So, Let's think about what this amortised cost actually is, okay? Because when you buy the investment, you are initially going to pay cash for that investment in debt. How much cash are we going to pay? Uh, well, here it says that we get a payment made of a 2% discount on the par value of 100 so instead of playing the par value to try and incentivize us to, to invest in that debt, uh, the issuer is giving us a discount. So it looks good, doesn't it, from our perspective, and that we're going to pay $98 for each of those debentures. So the amount of cash that we pay is 980000 if you're thinking about your journal entries and the amount of cash that you have paid, uh, then you're going to be debiting the investment and crediting your bank. Okay. There we go. But, but what do we receive? Okay. Uh, what do we receive over the life? Of this debt instrument okay uh, well the amount of cash that we receive uh, is going to be based upon the coupon interest which is four percent four percent of the par value which is a hundred dollars and there are ten thousand of those the benches in issue so that's going to be there. Is it 40,000 per annum? But that's going to be there. Is it for four years? So is that $160,000 that we receive in total? Okay. You will see where we're heading in a moment. Uh, but don't forget as well. that you receive your investment back on redemption, don't we? Okay, so what happens here is it says that we are going to get the money back in four years time at a 5% premium. So what we've got there, it's a 5% premium on the par value. So $100 multiplied by 10,000 multiplied by 
So the amount of money that we receive on redemption is the one million and fifty thousand. Okay. So what you've got there is if you total those two up, the one sixty and the one oh five oh, then the amount of cash that you receive is the one two ten thousand, isn't it? So the difference that you have then got uh, between the two, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think is 230,000, okay? Uh, so, so what's going to happen, again, if we're thinking about the entries here, the amount of money that we receive is that we will need to debit the bank and credit the investment but that just gives us a bit of an issue doesn't it because the investment was initially recorded at 980 here we need to make sure that it's recorded at 1 to 10 so what we have here is that this 230,000 is the interest that is received okay and on that interest that you have received in terms of your journal entries we're going to have to go through that and credit your interest receivable on the statement of profit or loss and debit the investment okay so overall in total the interest that we have on this investment is 230 uh, we need to be able to spread that over the four-year life of the debt uh, and in doing so we'll debit the investment credit the receivable and in increasing the investment that will then mean that when we get the cash in total over the life of the instrument it will then remove the overall value of the investment at redemption okay it's going to be quite challenging okay because in order to go through and look at the interest received uh the interest received effectively is looking at this transaction in substance so even though legally there is an interest rate is it of four percent on the debt don't forget that there is also 5% that's received at the end. So what we need to be able to go through and do there is that we need to be able to look at what is referred to as the effective rate of interest. So what is the rate of interest that is implicit within this arrangement and use that 5.73% to go through there and recognize this interest received. So that interest received will now be based upon the 5.73 effective rates. Don't panic. You will never have to calculate the effective rate of interest. It's some oh, funky, fancy IRR calculation. No way, not in this syllabus. Not even in the P2 syllabus. P2, strategic business reporting syllabus. Okay. Yeah. Off the script. Okay. So let's go through uh, and have a play around with it and show how it is treated over the life of the instruments. Because if we're looking at the financial statements, you're looking there at the statement of financial position. Uh what I'll do is I'll just lay it out slightly differently, actually. Uh, what we'll do there is we'll look at the statement of financial position. We'll look at the statement of profit or loss. Because the statement of financial position, you have your investment. And in the statement of profit or loss, you have your interest received. And what we're going to do there is we're going to look at it over the four years, year one, year two, 
year three and year four. Okay, there we go. Brilliant. How do we then lay that out? Well, we're going to have to go through there and do a working. And the good news is, is that it is a standardized working. So once you get it once, you can get it twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, and get it right in the exam. Okay. So let's go through and have a look at the working. Uh, so uh, we're going to go through and adopt a, a column approach where there's going to be five columns within there. So the first column. Is looking at the year, so year one, year two, year three, and year four. Okay, uh, we then will go through and look at the brought forward figure. Uh, so I'll kick that off straight away. The value of the investment initially is at $980,000. We then look at things. In a chronological order, we're going to look at the interest received. So is that there at the 5.73%? That will accrue over the year before you then have the cash. So that's 4% on the coupon rate. So every year you will receive cash back. So you will debit the bank and credit the investments. Okay, because it is eating in. Uh, you're getting a return on that investment. Uh, uh, so therefore, that is no longer uh, required to be paid by uh, the issuer of that debt. OK, so what we've got there, it's 4% on the coupon. So the good thing there is that we can put that in and that's going to be 40,000. OK, so 40,000 in year one, 40,000 in year two, 40,000 in year three and then in the final year year four it's the 1090 why because that's the 40,000 contractual cash flow plus is it there the five percent premium on the principal okay uh, that will then go through and give you is it your carry forward and what we see there is that the carry forward figure is what appears on the SFP. The interest receivable is what will then go through there on the statement of profit or loss. OK, excellent. So let's go through. Tap away on your calculator. So 980,000. Does that give me 5.73% of that? Is that 5.6? one five four okay so you will take the brought forward add the interest receivable deduct the cash that you actually receive uh, to give you the carry forward figure okay uh, I'll, I'll put debits and credits in at the end let's just get this table correct so what you've got there your carry forward should be nine nine six is it one five four Uh, so that's the year one figures. So your investment is at 996154. The interest receivable is at 56154. Okay. Uh, once you've got it for one year, you're away because it then just follows on. The closing figure is then next year's opening figure. And then you apply. The effective rate of interest is it there to that outstanding balance? 57080. Okay. Uh, 996154 plus 57080 less than 40,000 gives me 1013234. Okay. So again, in the financial statements, uh, my investment is 1013234. The interest is the 57080. Okay. 
Uh, year three, we're away. 1013234. Uh, does that give me 5058? Oh, oh, sorry, 58058. Oh, and then 58058 oh, plus 1013234 less than 40,000. Is that there as one o three one two nine two? Okay. So again, my figures on the statement of profit to loss is there as five eight o oh, five eight, and the investment is the one o oh, three one two nine two. Okay. And then this is where you you then see the magic. OK, uh, because what you've now got is the opening figure in the final year is the 1031292. Uh, does that give me interest receivable of 59093? Uh, what do you do if you go 1031292 plus 59093? Uh, deduct one o nine o thousand gives me nil in inverted commas. On my calculator, it's about three hundred and eighty-five. That's rounding, okay? Rounding because maybe this five point seven three isn't exactly five point seven three. Maybe it was five point seven two six five nine four three one six. Or something like that. Okay. And because that's rounded and because we've rounded elsewhere, it's never going to come directly down to nil. Okay. Uh, so just to finish that off on the financial statements 59093 and nil. Okay. Uh, and, and this is where, where it's quite clever because what you've got is the 980 is where we started that's the initial amounts that you have gone through there wasn't it and paid okay that's what you initially paid what has then happened is that if you go through and total all of this up here so total up your cash the 1090 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40 gives you, is it there, the 1.210 million, okay, 1,210,000. And that there is what you've received over the period of four years. And what we've done, this is double magic five six one five four so let's add up the interest receivable column plus five seven oh eight oh plus five eight oh five eight plus five nine oh nine three if you add that up It comes to 230,385. It's the rounding is whereby we're out. It comes to the 230,000. That 230,000 is the interest that we have received. And what we've done is we've spread it out over the life. Yeah, it ties back into what we spoke about initially in terms of how this amortized cost works and what we're trying to do and what's good about it is that instead of splitting the 230,000 out equally over the four years by using this effective rate of interest it actually applies the matching concept doesn't it whereby when we have a higher investment receivable if you like outstanding we have a higher interest receivable so you can see there that in years one, two and three, the investment increases. And as the investment increases, we therefore have a higher interest receivable figure.
Okay. Magic. Isn't it so clever yet so complicated? Uh, if you want to go through there and think about the journal entries. Uh, I will look at the journals for year one. So you can go through there and then do them for year two, three and four. So what you've got there initially, uh, we go through there, don't we? And you debit the investment. Credit the bank. Is it there with the 900? And 80,000. Uh, then what you have subsequently is your interest receivable. So if you like your investment income, if you like to call it investment income. Uh, so there, that's whereby you debit the interest receivable. Sorry, careful. You credit the interest receivable. And you debit the investments. Uh, and in year one, where's that? The five, six, one, five, four. A debit to the investment is whereby you're increasing the investment, hence why we added it to the opening balance, wasn't it? Uh, you've then got, is it the coupon interest that you receive each year? So that's whereby you receive money from the issuer. You debit your bank with 40000 and that will therefore reduce the value of the investment. A credit to the investment will reduce it. Okay. So what you've got there is you can see now that you have a credit to the investment of 40, a debit to the investment of 56154. You initially started with the 980,000, and that will then go through there, won't it? If I find the right page and give you the correct closing figure okay of 996.154 for year one okay uh once you've then done that subsequently each year you just need to record the interest receivable uh by debiting the investment crediting interest receivable and then record the cash receipt debit bank credit receivable with the forty thousand every single year don't forget in that final year you need to deal with the principal amount as well uh, that you will then receive. So you're not just faced with, was it the 40? You've got the 5% premium on the par value. Okay. And breathe. Yeah, that is rock solid. I'd like to say it won't get any harder. Wait till we get to the compound financial instruments and convertible debt. That really does take things up another notch and adds to what we see here. So I think it's important that you do take a bit of time out now to go into the study text of your tuition provider. Look at the example that they have done in the chapter based upon financial assets and your amortized cost. OK, maybe try and find a couple of multiple choice questions to work because you really do need to be able to understand this before we then move in. To the world of financial liabilities and then compound financial instruments work through this example again well done for sticking with it keep working your way through the notes and the videos and it will all become much easier come the exam